Well, you can't get them all right. We start with an errata. I complained about the tab search for plugins in the previous Obscura, and I was wrong. They improved it. For some reason, they changed the way that searching for opening new plugins works. Normally in 13, you'd enter the search, tab, press the arrows, press enter, done. Now in 14, that tabbing, it takes three tabs to get down into the text field to start arrowing through your plugins. Why? In fact, they've just removed that. It's just arrows. You type your search function, arrow, 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 till you find what you want, enter, and boing. I'm having a lot of fun with the pattern editor. I just learned that you can have independent time bases on each lane. So first we're gonna duplicate the pattern. And let's say we wanna to get to a triplet fill at the end of this section on the claps. We just switch the time base and it works only on that. And it's incredible. And then let's do, yeah, 30 seconds on the hat. Why not? We'll get some trappy stuff going on. Just keep in mind you're in the pattern paradigm and you're going to want to make duplicate patterns or new patterns and then have to switch to them up in the project window. Steinberg has set up the individual note tracks into lanes. And these work just like the tracks in the arranger. They have their own controls and they can be set up independently to display whatever you want. This is really cool. So I've got everything enabled because why not? I got the screen room, but if you want it less jumbled, turn off some of the controls you don't think you'll need. So this can give you quick access to some super useful controls, say like uh, swing. Not new to 14, but often overlooked is the track visibility and logical agent. Okay, the track visibility agent. So up here, We've got a couple different agents that we can use. We can do good old command F and find our tracks. That's a tracks with bass in it. Can select tracks by type. Adjust my audio tracks. Adjust my VST instrument tracks. Yada yada. And toggle all tracks back on. Then you've also got a logical visibility agent. So I can high, I can select any tracks, these ones, and say that distorted drums, and go hide selected tracks, and they disappear. So say you don't want to work on some tracks anymore for a while, voila, you can filter out tracks that are sitting around empty. Uh, in this case, I've already gone through and muted tracks I'm not interested in, hide muted tracks. Voila, and just gives you a nice shorter view of things. Uh, I'm not using these old effects tracks, so I got rid of those. You can assign hotkeys to them. Let's get it. Another great organizational tool is the divider. Okay, so here's an oldie but a goodie. This one's been around since Cubase 9. I feel it's something like that. We're gonna go up here to the right. You can see I've got tempo map, rather complicated for this song markers, an arranger chain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the, the divide track set here. And now those tracks now reside in their own little pane and they have their own vertical zoom pane and they have their own vertical zoom. And vertical zoom is entirely independent. So I can keep this nice tight view with my markers. 
my arranger chain, my tempo track, and just blow those up as I need to. I included this one because I get asked a lot. Hey Jay, I remember when I'd activate an automation lane and I could see a ghost of the waveform. To get it back, just get your automation panel open, defaults to F6, and click on Show Data on Tracks. This is great to have around because you can ultra zoom in on the automation data and still see where transients are. If you're running a bunch of insert plugins and you want to commit them to just a certain clip on your track, you can just drag those suckers right into your direct offline processing window. F7 opens your direct offline processing. All you gotta do is grab the main handle of the inserts, blammo. Off we go. If you have auto apply selected, they will all process and apply, and they're now part of the clip. You can still disable individual plugins or disable all of them. And you can do a bounce to commit forever. Another super obscure one is adding any plugin on inserts on your monitor bus. This does not get into your mix. This only goes to your speakers and Cubase will keep these inserts in your buses for every time you open the program. Be careful though. If you have added equalizers or other apps that change the sound of your mix, it will open with that the next time. Now this can come in handy for headphones for talent. Here I'm sending on Q1 the mix to my talent, but it's not quite as loud for them, so I'm inserting a, a Hornet track utility to boost the gain just for that Q mix. And then using control room to flip between the mix and the Q, get it balanced. In the first Cubase Obscura, I covered the changes to the control room. I also forgot to unmute my dialogue there. So there have been a graphical overhaul to the entire section and some really handy changes made like these faders and monitor controls for every single bus that you have set up in control room. Feels much more like using this monitor section on a mixing console. And as stated, we can insert plugins right into the Cubus And you can keep doing this for up to four Q buses, four independent mixes. So I've long been using this trick to set up Q buses in control room to allow me to flip back and forth between reference tracks and my mix. So just make yourself an audio track. Pull in your reference song and we're gonna take the volume down to zero. So this does not output to the main mix and we're gonna set a pre-fader send to Q3 here. And now we just use the bus monitoring and the new fader in the Q section and game match. You can also assign hotkeys to switch between these buses. Now when we combine the last two Obscura points that we've learned, we can not only audibly A-B switch between reference and mix, can add metering plugins into that Q-mix and have visual comparisons up. There we go. 
Control room is really Cubase's best singular feature. Destroys all other DAWs in this department. If you're interested in getting Cubase, if you're new, scan the QR code. Otherwise, head off to Steinberg's site and get your update. It's worth it.